right? That would be which layer? So from so here to here is the epidermis. Mm -hmm. So what layer is that? Stratum basal. Stratum basal. That's your base layer that is making what? Do mitosis to make more keratinocytes, <laughs> making new cells. I always pin it there. Now technically, if we're gonna get picky about it, um, it, it extends a little further up, but I always pin it right there and I always say the dark blue layer, right? And then you've got above that the stratum spinosum, and then you have the stratum granulosum which is this lighter blue. And this is, this is taken from the palms of the hands or skin of the feet so that you've got that fifth layer that's always represented by the white color and that's the stratum lucidum, okay? Like lucid. And so from here to here is the stratum what? Corneum. Corneum, it's all the flesh colored because these cells are pretty much what? Dead. dead. They're all dead, they're filled with keratin. 20 to 30 layers. This should be the thickest layer. It's kind of, I, I never like how it's represented so much, but it is what it is. So that's the epidermis. From here to here is the dermis. dermis. It is difficult to tell the papillary from the reticular layer on here. I'll be honest with you. So that's why like on your skin quiz, I bracketed them, right? And we'll go through those. So this down here, this is adipose tissue that I'm talking about here, or touching here. So this is what layer? Subcutaneous. Subcutaneous layer, okay? So first of all, we have, if the hair is above here, it's called the hair shaft. shaft. Um, I, again, don't get very picky about the hair parts, unless you're gonna become a beautician. I don't know how crucial that is for you to know every part. The bulb of the hair, you know, down there, the actual part that's replicating down here, we'll talk about in lecture. I don't pin it on here. This is where your actual hair follicle is. The follicular cells are what actually are living. And then they push the dead stuff. This is all dead protein. And it's held together by your cuticle. All right, so do you see this white structure here? It's coiled. Do you see how it has a duct all the way to the surface? So this is a sweat gland. And this is the most common sweat gland and this sweat should not smell. And you find these everywhere in the body. So this is one of the ecrine sweat glands. And again, shouldn't have any odor. What they've done here with this green glob, and this is only in the axillary, which is where? Armpits. Armpits and in the groin. groin area, the pubic area. This is where you have the smelly ones. And what they do, these particular sweat glands, which are called apocrine sweat glands, A-P-O-C-R-I-N-E, these have additives in them. They have lipids and proteins and to produce the odor. They don't have a duct that goes directly to the surface. Their duct, which is horrible on this, uh, on this model, but their duct should go right into the hair shaft so that the sweat then comes up on the hairs. And I always remember the A1 because they're in the axillary region. And most people, let's face it, if you're smelling yourself, that's where you're gonna smell yourself. Most people don't smell their groin or pubic <laughs> area on a daily basis. Um, why would you have smelly sweat? What purpose would that serve? <laughs> is it kind of like dogs where you like mark your scent? <laughs> That's correct. They, they're pheromones and they're actually designed to attract a mate. Let's get married. <laughs> Most people, if they have odors anywhere else, it's because the sweat has sat on their skin and their clothes, especially for an extended period of time. And then bacteria start to eat the urea part of the sweat and they produce ammonia as a result. And that's what produces odor on other parts of the body in your clothes. Um, underarms, different deal. All right, so this is the erector pili muscle and its job is to make the hair 
stairs on end when goosebumps. you're upset or excited or scared and also produce goosebumps to our in your when you're cold and what those goosebumps are involuntary smooth muscle contractions that are trying to pull more blood flow to the surface of the skin to warm you up what's this big purple glob Spacious gland. Spacious gland. It's right on the hair. See, it wraps around the hair, so it secretes that oil right into the hair shaft. And then comes up to the surface of the skin. And you do have a, it doesn't, again, doesn't do it justice, but there actually is a duct that comes up, an oil duct. Um, these would be what? Veins and arteries. Veins and arteries, blood vessels. And so they're all in the dermis, right? Now, there's a whole bunch of these guys, so I'm not going to have you learn all of them. you got to know the big green ones. See the big green ones? They're deeper. These are called Pacinian corpuscles. And Pacinian corpuscles are for you to feel pressure. So you really have to push a little harder to activate these guys because they're deeper down in the dermis. So if I label these or pin them, you have to put Pacinian corpuscles and you know that they're for pressure. P for pressure. Easy enough. Mm -hmm. The other ones that I like to pin are more prevalent too, and those are your Merkel cells. And your Merkel cells, there's quite a few of them through here. The Merkel cells, named after Merkel cells, I'm sorry. The messenger cells, M-E-S-S, M-E-I-S-S-N-E-R. I think that's right. Those are for touch, okay? Makes sense that they're closer to the surface here because do you feel touch, even light touch, right away? Yes, okay? So those are the two I'll pin in here. You have to know about some others, but those will be in your lecture test. Make sense? Um, <coughs> did I forget anything? I don't think, there's your Merkel cells. Um, I could pin those two, but that's all right. I think that's it. Pretty simple, yes, no, for the skin. Oh, I know, one other thing, these ridges. Papillary dermis. What are these? Dermal papilla? Dermal papillae. 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 Why do we have them? These are actually projections of the dermis that come up. Why? Why would they be like that? And that's why you see how your stratum basal is ri the ridges, because those dermal papillae are coming up in there. What good would that do? Any time in the body you have convolutions, you know, like in your intestines, or ridges, it's to increase surface area. So what good would it be to increase the surface area here? Diffusion. Diffusion of? Nutrients. Nutrients and? Oxygen. To keep these bottom layers, what? Alive. Alive. So they can do mitosis. So you see all the capillaries that go up into those dermal papillae? So they are actually then increasing diffusion and keep all these layers alive so they can do mitosis. And it keeps the melanocytes alive so they can secrete pigment, right? Now, are there melanocytes on here? Can anybody see any? Or any pigment? See that little brown spot? See that little brown spot? That's to denote melanin. I don't pin it on here, I just thought I'd point it out. Because people have asked about that. I think that's it. Yes, no? <laughs> Easy enough.